Welcome, welcome everyone to Time Served, and I'm your host, Phil. I'm here to serve you with the freshest and funniest court cases from the judges we all know and love. Before I begin, I do want to thank some other content creators who not only entertain me and thousands of other people, but inspire me to create this channel. So big in Mike, Credence, Mikey, Bishop, Ben, Miss Rose, Old Squishy, and Entropolis. I just want to say thank you for being you, and I hope to collaborate with some of you one of these days. And also, the people in the comment section of Court Case Videos, it's the greatest community. It's just an awesome community with a wonderful group of people, and I'm looking forward to interacting with you on a daily basis. Okay, so now the reason why we're here. Everyone knows we have about four or five of the big judges, Bryant, Middleton, Manning. However, if you really look, there are some gems hidden in the catacombs of the internet. Um, so search in the dockets, less traveled. I always find content that will knock your socks off. Like this diamond in the rough. It's from the 27th district of Wyandotte, Michigan. Um, and her name is um, Chief Justice Elizabeth DeSanto. And she's right in the upper left corner right there. She is a firecracker. Uh, maybe some of you have seen her. Maybe some of you haven't. But let's get into this first video. Um, I'm calling it, it must have been the darn creamer. And you'll see why. Um, Miss Firecracker DeSanto gets into it uh, with our girl uh, Dawn Mendoza over here. Um, so you'll see. It's a pro uh, probation violation. All right, so with much further ado, our first video is up that darn creamer. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Right, thank you. All right. Have a good day. Okay, and this is the matter of Don Mendoza, 22423. And appearance counsel? Attorney. Guys, you just have to adjust. The, the sound is a little bad on uh, Judge DeSanto's. Mike, everybody else is pretty mic'd up, but uh, DeSantos, uh, you just, just turn it up a little bit for this one. Attorney Corey Westmoreland, appearing on behalf of Ms. Mendoza. Ms. Mendoza, would you please unmute yourself and state your name for the record? Don Mendoza. All right, thank you. And Ms. Mendoza, you were on probation for operating a visibly impaired by alcohol and this is alleging technical violations two, three, and four. The alleged test a positive for alcohol and morphine on January 2nd. You it's alleged you have to pay and it alleges you test a positive for alcohol again on January 8th. And counsel, what's happening today? Yes, Your Honor, I did uh, speak to Ms. Mendoza regarding the allegations at this time. Uh, I did explain to her her right to have a contested hearing. Uh, at this time, we are prepared to uh, waive our right to have a hearing, and my client is prepared to uh, enter a guilty plea. All right, Ms. Mendoza, please raise your right hand. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you sign me swear from the testimony about to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. All right, and you heard the plea that your attorney indicated, correct? Correct. Ask those allegations, how do you plead? Guilty. And you've gone over your advice of rights for probation and violation purposes with your attorney, correct? Yes. And you understand all of those rights? Yes. And you also understand that by entering into a plea, you'll be leaving some of those rights, specifically your right to a contested hearing? Yes. And you also understand the recommendation in this matter and the possible sentencing in this matter, correct? Yes. Specifically, is the recommendation for you to continue to complete alternative probation, pay a $50 probation violation fee. Ma'am, I need you to go somewhere that we don't have this background noise. <laughs> Okay, guys, so here we go. Right off the bat, Judge DeSanto, she is like Judge Bryant. She likes complete control, no noise, as though you were sitting in her class, um, in her courtroom. Um, 
live and in person. So she already got strike one. If you look at Judge DeSanto's face, she is not starting off on the, off the on the right foot. Hold on, I'm gonna walk to my car. Also, the new intensive outpatient. Remember, I got on Three on the alcohol I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to my car. Two seconds, please. Your face is on two seconds. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. All right. So the recommendation is for you to complete and com continue and complete all terms of probation. Pay a 50 hour probation violation fee, attend intensive outpatient, 30 days on the alcohol tether, and five days jail. That's the recommendation. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. You understand this court can follow that recommendation, not follow that recommendation, um, make adjustments to that recommendation. You understand all that? Yes, ma'am. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea? Yes, ma'am. And has anybody promised or anything threatened you or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. And counsel, if you can please or to your client. Sure. Ms. Mendoza, are you currently on probation out of the uh, Wyandotte District Court? Yes. As a term and condition of your probation, are you to adhere to all uh, the terms and conditions of your probation from the probation officer? Yes. I uh, did, did. Have you failed to uh, pay your costs and fines as ordered by the court? Yes. Did you also test uh, positive for alcohol on January 2nd of this year? Yes. Not sure where the morphine came in, but yes. Okay, so not only did she test positive for alcohol and she doesn't know where it came from, morphine, but she also hasn't paid her fines. So uh, Judge DeSanto is not too thrilled. But at this time, you're taking responsibility for the morphine that you tested positive for as well, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and you understand that that is a direct uh, violation of the terms and conditions of your probation? Yes. Satisfied, Judge. All right, the court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea. To the probation violation, the case technical violations two, three, and four will enter. And counsel, as to the recommendation. Yes, Your Honor, I, I would. Uh, Ask that the recommendation be adopted in part. At this time, I, I would just be. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Mendoza. Is your window down? No. <laughs> okay, because there's some um, wind or something coming through. I'm sorry. What was that, Counsel? I would just uh, be requesting that the recommendation be adopted in part. As to the uh, five days jail, I'd ask that that be. Uh, suspended at this time and uh miss mendoza has been nothing but upfront open and honest uh, she is apologetic for testing positive for alcohol what what happened was she was at work somebody made a pot of coffee unbeknownst to her in that coffee they did put some alcohol and there you go that's why she tested positive for it um it's not going to happen i did explain to her moving forward she has to be way more diligent in knowing what she's consuming and putting into her system. I truly don't believe that this is going to happen again. She is a single mother. Uh, as far as payments to the court, she understands she does owe the money. It's just been extremely difficult as uh, she is a single mother raising her children. Um, but she's going to uh, make more diligent efforts to do so. Okay, so I can completely relate to her. Um, with the payments, um, I just share something personal. Um, my wife of uh, 13 years passed away a couple of years ago, um, and I'm a single father. Um, I have a 12 year old daughter and that I'm raising alone and falling behind in 2023 um, is not uncommon uh, for 
um, everyone. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a special education teacher, um, I'm by no means rich, um, and falling behind I can relate to. But um, testing positive uh, for the alcohol is something she's got to be careful with. Mendoza. Yes. Where is it? Where is it you work? Uh, my day job is at uh, Safe Flight. My night job is at Ford Patio Bar and Grill. Ford Patio Bar. What is that? Ford Patio Bar and Grill. Okay. <coughs> well, let's walk through this for a moment, shall we? You're on probation for Opry Ball in time. Operating while impaired, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And you had a previous violation for alcohol consumption and hydrocodone, correct? The hydrocodone I have a prescription for. So okay. that, but so it, perhaps, it, you not, perhaps you do not supply that prescription to probation prior to the violation. No, and I did. So, it, but it, in any event, okay. you pled guilty to the probation violation, specifically as it relates to alcohol, correct? Correct. Okay. And at that time, the court indicated 45 days on the alcohol tether, increase correct. your testing and mandatory jail for future violation, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. So there are two states that are alleged that you consumed out that you tested positive for alcohol. So on which date is it somebody allegedly put alcohol in your coffee? Well that I that was the night that was a New Year's Eve. It would have had to have been New Year's Eve because I was there until four o'clock in the morning, got tired and started drinking coffee. Okay. And so what about the positive alcohol from January eighth? That one? I actually drank alcohol. What did you drink? Um, I don't remember. It was something called pineapple upside down cake. We had just left the funeral service. My friend had passed away and we went out to dinner, me and two other girls. And I drank a shot with them talking about, we were just sharing stories about our friend that passed away. <laughs> Just look at the judge's face when she gives stories about why she drank pineapple upside down cake. If you're on probation and you're a single parent, you know, I understand your dead friend. It's horrible. But did you really need to take that shot? That, that's what the judge is trying to get to. And what about the morphine from uh, January second test? Where'd that come from? I have I have no clue where the morphine came from, and actually asked them how I could have, and actually went to the doctors, freaking out the next day, and made them test me, because I did not take any kind of illegal drugs. Okay, and then you were sentenced back in May. Correct. And at that time. Your fines and costs were eighteen hundred and twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And you paid your bond was applied, which left it to thirteen twenty-five. And you made one fifty dollar payment, correct? I made a hundred dollar payment. Okay, when did you make that payment? I don't remember. I'm behind on the payments. When after I went on the the tether, that costed me almost a thousand dollars. I mean, I'm struggling working two jobs. I I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you. Most of the time, I've been going to dub. I've been going to AA meetings. Uh, Michelle told me that AA meetings were not good enough. That's not what the court wanted. So I don't get signatures, but I'm still going to AA meetings. Since all this happened, um, 
I literally talked to my doctor and told her I wanted to be weaned off the Norco. So I went from 90 a month to 10. So I am trying to head in the right direction, Your Honor. I mean, I have no problem. You want to double up AA meetings? I actually enjoy going to them and they are helpful. But right now I am like so stressed out financially. And then when they put me on the tether the first time, I didn't even have electricity. I just lost all the food from not having no electricity for three days. I didn't even have internet. And they said, I still had to go in that day. So, I mean, I'm, I'm financially, I'm struggling. My mother just got out of rehab for a surgery she had. I had to come up with money to help her get back into her home. I'm struggling, but I am trying to do the right thing. I'm struggling. She's going through a wide range of emotions and I promise you she's going to hit another level um, this gets really good and really intense. Ma'am, I can, I can understand and appreciate that. But I don't think that's a mutual understanding and appreciation of the court's order. Because the court indicated mandatory jail for any future violation. And now we have three. Three. Okay. I understand. Even if you take away... Even if you take away the failure to pay, we have two significant ones, positive for alcohol. I understand. And how much of that coffee did you drink when you indicated that there was alcohol? Here we go. Here we Literally go. four big to-go cups of coffee. I know I'm not trying to laugh. I just... You could, you're telling this court you didn't taste the alcohol in your first couple sips? I thought it was just a damn creamer. To be honest, I'm not lying. I was working and we were swamped and I just was. <laughs> I thought it was. It gets funnier every day. It must have been the damn creamer. <laughs> and, then the Santa, and the judge is just like, what? Did you just say the damn creamer? <laughs> and the train's falling off the tracks, Miss Mendoza. <laughs> a different kind of creamer flavored creamer i was taking big drinks kept going back to work <laughs> so no i honestly did not know and that is the truth and but i mean i drank the one day knowingly and i understand that and you didn't feel any different after having even two of the big carryout contain the big carryout cups of alcohol of coffee with alcohol i thought it was my actual pain medication because I had to double up on my pain medication just to even work that night. I have a really bad knee. And so when I got a, when I'm on, when we're really busy at work, I'm constantly running, just running back and forth as a waitress and carrying trays. But I mean, why I, I'm not trying to make anything up. I mean, literally when they told me I dropped negative, I mean, positive, I went straight into the doctors the next morning because I couldn't figure out how. Come on. Okay. Well, here's what the court's going to do. The court's going to indicate you to continue to complete all terms of probation. Five days jail. Boom. So there it is. Uh, the five days jail. Okay. That's the point of contention now. Um, here we go. 30 days alcohol tether upon release. That's the thing. You're putting in. I don't mind the jail. You want to send me to jail, that's fine. Take me away from my children and two jobs. I understand that, you know, you're doing what you have to do. But I cannot afford another tether. I'm already 100. I'm already behind a house payment and everything else because of the first tether. So I mean, what you're what you're what you're putting on me is just another stress that I cannot handle, ma'am. Then perhaps you shouldn't have consumed alcohol. You should have complied with all yeah. of the terms Boom. of probation. Answer for everything. Uh oh. Look at judge. You need to contact Michelle, ma'am, so that you can um, get 
get all that information and you will have to report. I'll give you until Wednesday to report so you can um, set things up with work. <laughs> Look at the stare off. <laughs> Look at that stare. Whatever you say, Your Honor. <laughs> I guess I should start smoking weed like everybody else and get a medical marijuana card. Because <laughs> you know what? It seems like with your court, anybody who's got any kind of issues, so I, there was somebody that went in there on a tether. That was their fifth violation. And that was my very first violation that I ended up on that tether. I, I, I don't, I'm not understanding your court. But I did wrong. I'll assume my responsibility. Have a good day, ma'am. Okay, well, we done? Let me just clarify something, ma'am. You were placed on probation May 10th. Yep. Your, your first violation indicates high use of alcohol just a few months after that. I was sick and as I a, took a bunch of cough as, medicine. As a, as a result, as a result, It gets court ordered 45 days on the alcohol tether, increase your testing, mandatory mm -hmm. jail for future violation. The court and, and clearly that wasn't sufficient because here we are again for another violation of alcohol mm -hmm. consumption. Yep. Is there anything else? Um, no, I'm I'm just trying to help you understand when you said you weren't understanding where no. the court was coming from. Oh, I definitely understand, but the first time literally was cough medicine and you put me on a 45 day tether over cough medicine, but somebody else can go in there and drop 30 million damn weed dirties trying to get their damn medical marijuana card and yeah, they get cancer. You're in court. So that's please, fine. Please, no, watch, that's please fine. watch your language. I'm a, you know please what? I'm a upset. Language. Ms. Mendoza, I would highly recommend that you stop arguing with the judge at this time. Yep. This bitch can't be serious. All right. Hi, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. All right, off the record. Okay, and so. Exhale. So the. It gets <laughs> even more awkward every time I watch it. Um, she just didn't know when to be quiet. And I think she just had enough. Um, but you know what? The judge is right. And that's what it is. You violate probation. It's the law. Um, they gave her chances. It is what it is. I mean, she can't, you know, but I understand where she's coming from. <laughs> All right. How's that for the off the beaten path? All right, here we go. Um, we're going to get a classic. Um Judge Middleton, um, this one <laughs> happened the, <laughs> the other day. Um, it's real quick, but what you have to do is what you what everyone has to do is just look, watch everybody's reaction. Please watch everybody's reaction. Okay, watch TJ Reed, watch Mr. Hamilton in the middle, um, and I'll say no more. Just listen and watch. <laughs> Sanders CMS case, we need Mr. Hass. That is set for 930. Our 920 case is Village Court. And I'm trying to see who K51 is. We just had someone connected, Ms. Carr. Is that you, Ms. Carr? Yes. All right, we're all done with your case. I will see you next Friday at 115. Okay, do I come in personally? No, it'll be by Zoom once again. I would suggest that you get a hold of Lisa or Pamela Mitchell or somebody and give them an update on what your medical circumstance is. Okay, I'll call them right now. Okay. All right, I will see you next Friday by Zoom. You don't need to come in here. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. <coughs> 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 <laughs> and that's why you keep it zoom. 
Look at their faces. Look at Philip Hamilton and look at TJ Reed, Christopher Cannon. Look at those faces of utter disgust. Um, <laughs> Judge Middleton couldn't cover that up. That was <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> it was a quick one. All right, next one on time served uh, is um, Knox Stream from Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, we have a kind old lady in a wheelchair. Um, she uh, got into a little trouble at the local Walmart. Um, you know, we've all been in trouble at the Walmart. All right, well, you know, she's got a reasonable argument. We don't know exactly what she says, but you know, we'll see. Are you Miss Thompson? Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> Is it me or did she look shocked? Did she look shocked that, that they called her name? <laughs> she had no idea where that came from. <laughs> Are you Miss Thompson? Yeah. Okay, Miss Thompson. You have the right to remain silent. Any Are you Miss Thompson? <laughs> Hi. Are you Miss Thompson? Yeah. Okay. This bitch can't Ms. Thompson, be serious. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one can be appointed for you. Did you fill out an affidavit with your name and, and address and everything on it? Yeah. Affidavit. Yes. Do you swear or affirm everything in your affidavit is true? Okay, great. All right, how long have you lived in Knoxville? About a year from here. Mark. Where did you live before? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay, and are you are you uh says you make nine hundred a week? Excuse me, a month. Is that for SSI? Is is that disability that you, that you get every month? Do you get disability a month? A month, yes. Yeah. Okay. Disability. Right. This magistrate is being so kind and so patient with her. Um, I'm sure this is very difficult. I think this one was actually um, in the early hours of the morning because uh, they, they do these 24-7. If you follow um, this this uh, channel, uh, they, they, they go all day, all night. They're, they're, they're uploading videos um, live. Um, and speaking of liking and following, please – like and subscribe to Time Serve, baby, with your boy Phil. Okay. It says that you've been arrested in Hamilton County for DUI in 2013 and 2017. Does that sound right? No. That's not you? Uh -uh. No. Okay. No. Okay. I do a lot. What? I don't see any. I don't see any cases here for you in Knox County except the two one that I two I'm about to tell you about. Okay. You've got a criminal impersonation charge that said this happened on criminal impersonation. I'm gonna tell you. I said it said this allegedly happened on January the 25th. That's Wednesday at Kinsel Way. That's the Walmart. Okay. And it wow. said. It said that 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 you were trespassed on the Walmart, and they found you in the Walmart on Kinsel Way, and um, that you had uh, selected and concealed merchandise valued at fifty nine dollars ninety three cents, and you were trying to leave the store that with merchandise that hadn't been paid for, and you'd already been trespassed, and so uh, when they caught you, you gave them false information about your identity before they found your driver's license. So you lied to the police is what they say. Okay. I'm not saying you did, but that's what they're saying. 
okay? And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna charge you a bond on the criminal impersonation, but I do have to charge you a bond on the burglary charge because that's a felony, all right? So I'm gonna put a, um, a $2,000 bond on that and you've got to stay out of the Walmart. How much was the product they said I got? $59.93. No way. That's no what man. it said. No way. It was not. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm not convicting you of anything today. I'm just giving you a court. Could you imagine the poor loss prevention? people that had to deal with this <laughs> she put it in her pants $59 what could she possibly have taken um could you, could you imagine I, I just just picture that and and her talking and them trying to figure out what she was saying and they probably just said just just call the police just call the police okay and I'm giving you a lawyer do you know who your lawyer has been? Huh? You know, have you had a lawyer in Knox County before? No. She wouldn't give me my receipt back. <laughs> and she called us that give me a gift card and I didn't even see that. They went in my pocketbook with that, my I'm he just went on in. He was supposed to put no. What the hell are you okay. talking about? I, I said, well, I'm supposed to do it. Did, didn't you hear what she just said? Judge, case closed. And that means no people from going in my pocket. All right, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna waive the administrative fee for you. And I'm gonna give you a court date. Um, it's gonna be felony court on Friday the 27th. What Friday? That's tomorrow, the 27th, in felony court. Okay? And your attorney will be with you. I don't know what that is. Where felony court is, they're going to take <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you there. I don't know nothing but uh, uh, Walmart and Broadway. Okay, we like you don't have to drive, they're going to take you there on Friday. Okay, they're going to come and get me. Well, you, if you're still in the jail, they're going to take you there. Well, I want to make a lot of bombs. Okay, well, if you make your bond, the jail's going to tell you when to get back. Uh, huh? The jail will give you a new court date if you bond out. But if you're still here Friday, which is tomorrow, <laughs> then we're going to take you to court. I want to make an old bond. My car is on Walmart uh, uh, parking lot. Okay, but you can't. And I have to have office. I have to have my. Uh, it's already low. I can't. I can't give you an ROR bond because of you having a felony charge. Did the judge get R and R bond out of what she just said? Because. I could swear the judge is just shaking her head and writing everything and then saying next. Hats off to this judge. She's my hero. She's my absolute hero. So that's where we are. Is you got a you got a bond of two thousand dollars, appearance bond that costs two hundred dollars to get out. But that's the best I can do. And your attorney's gonna be with you on Friday. That's what I'm asking too. You're asking about what? I'm gonna get home. I'm gonna get home. And what? Right, talk to Lisa about that. 
I, I want to go ahead and play that two hundred dollars. And what is the court? I want to know. The court's up town, and they'll give you if you pay yourself out. They'll give you a new court date before you leave the facility. If you don't and you stay here, then we'll transport you to court from here. Okay. Okay. I'll the address pay. is right here on the paper. I won't be. Okay. So you're all. That set. is it. Thank you. No, thank you. What patience by the judge and even the um, deputy. Wow. I mean, she's a kind old lady. She wasn't being nasty or anything, but, I mean, come on. Trying to figure that out. Yikes. Absolute yikes. <laughs> All right. Um, our next video um, is another Knox stream. Um, another uh, late night, early morning gentleman. Um, he's a shaman of some type and he uses methamphetamine as a medication, I think. Um, so let's see, uh, shaman meth. And he's also a really good dancer. As my puppy barks. So all right, what's your name, sir? My name is Lance Ellis. So you can filter all that time. Did you fill out this document? Yes, sir. It's past my ability. Do you swear everything on here is correct? Uh, it is. Yes, sir. Uh, the piece of property is that you old. A, you have a number of important rights. Uh, you have a right to have an attorney. If you want an attorney and cannot afford one, this court will appoint one to represent you. You have a right to remain silent. You don't have to say anything about this case if you choose not to. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You have a right to have a hearing on these matters. Right now you're charged with methamphetamine, simple possession of methamphetamine. That's a class A misdemeanor. Possession of drug paraphernalia. That's also a class A misdemeanor and public uh, indecency. First, second offense. That's a B misdemeanor. You're not eligible for pretrial release. It appears as though you've had, you've been arrested in the last six months. It looks like that was in November. And no, so no, we're going to go there through. No there was no meth involved. So where did that I understand. Charge? Well, and that is, uh, and I'd encourage you to exercise that right to remain silent. I oh, can yeah. read the warrant to you if you'd like, but uh, we're going to go through a number of questions now and set a bond for you. Okay. Oh, yeah. You want me to read you that warrant? Uh, what does the warrant have to do with what, what the original charge is? What? There's nothing to search because I have no, no physical property in the state. Okay. Uh, well, searching Ellis's person, search incident to arrest, two syringes were located. Those aren't uh, meth. Those are clean and they're illegal. Pocket. Those are clean and illegal, sir, and those yeah, are well, best. and so this isn't the time for that. That's something that your attorney will be able okay. to talk with you about. Oh, uh, are you are you from Knox County? Uh, sir, I've been told that by people here that I fight for every freaking day on the streets. You live so, in Knox? How long have you been yes, in Knox County? I've been, here, I've been here two years. It feels like about 20. Well, I'm from Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are you working right now? Uh, I do. I do ministry on the street, sir. Um, I, I'm a pastor, a preacher, uh, a spiritual worker. I do things like that. Okay. Are you on disability? I am, sir. Okay. Are you currently on probation or parole? Uh, no. Have you ever had any felony convictions? Uh, not that would apply in this state, sir, no. 
Have you had any felony convictions in any state? Yes, in Georgia. How many? But the, the conviction would not have been a felony in this state, just one. Okay. Well, I'm not a lawyer. Maybe we could contact one, put one on retainer for time served channel. But isn't a felony carried from state to state? I mean, if I commit a felony here and then I go there, I think I have a felony. But at this point, who gives a shit? He really doesn't care. It was possession of meth. I, I used it for shamanistic work, sir. I would encourage I you to exercise that right to remain silent. Uh, these This conversation that we're having is being recorded and being uh, broadcast on the internet. And so uh, any, I would encourage you to exercise that right to remain silent. And that's something that you can discuss with your attorney. Uh, have you ever had any failure to appears? Uh, it's possible, sir, because they have given me some court dates before for minor instances. And I, I don't think those court dates have come up yet. I hope not. But okay. it's hard for me to keep up with days and paperwork when I'm on the streets. <laughs> Didn't it sound like you said tour dates? <laughs> well, he is a shaman. He maybe he's a traveling shaman. He's getting his tour dates and his court dates uh, confused. Yeah, my tour dates and my court dates. And I love how he beats around the bush. He is a master of beating around the bush. <laughs> he's awful at it, but he is quite masterful at at it. <laughs> I got you. I don't have a place to keep things. Have you ever had any history? What does having a place to keep things have to do with anything? Of mental health issues. Yes. Yes, sir. And I've been off my medication now for like four days and I've been freaking out and I'm trying to get back on as soon as possible. So hopefully they'll have it for me. <laughs> Uh, I did have substance abuse issues, so I worked the 12 steps and learned that uh, moderation of anything can be obtained with healing. And so, no, I, I no longer have substance abuse issues. Okay. Uh, uh, really? 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 I have had them in the past. I understand. Uh, are you married? Any kids? Uh, I have two kids. I have divorced. My kids are grown. Uh, do you have family in the area? No, sir. Not in the state. Okay, that's so you've why, been that's here. Why I came here. Say what? That's why I came here. I'm a refugee, sir. I got you. So you've been here for a couple of years. You're on. You're currently on disability. Been here for a couple of years, but feels like twenty. Absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, what other ties to the community do you have? Uh, well, for the past 12 months, I have been fighting every single day, doing spiritual type things and not spiritual type things to prevent the complete destruction. Tell your salad to pack your shit. Cause I'm so not I don't know if you know anything about what's been going on for the past 12 months, but if you look at all the changes that have happened in the past 12 months, as far as treatment of everybody, Johnson. and as far as uh, things pack that you stuff. guys, the head honchos, listen to. I know that a lot of the people have been listening to supposed right, leaders from out of state that are not truly leaders. And they're not here for your benefit, even though they con you. One of those people is Lee Ellis, okay? That is my biological father who chased me here to abuse me and kill me for no reason other than selfishness, sir. Whoa! I must have missed that one. <laughs> Lee Ellis's father wants to kill him. The plot thickens. Yeah, and uh, anybody else that's ever asked okay. or anyone from Georgia for advice on how to run Tennessee, these are a pen of it right now. Okay, you so, know those things plenty well. I understand. So, uh, okay. on this matter, on the methamphetamine, the it's an A misdemeanor, that's going to be a thousand dollar appearance. That's the first time he stopped moving. I think he just wants to hear his charges. <laughs> bond on the drug paraphernalia that's an a misdemeanor that's a thousand dollar appearance bond 
on the uh, public indecency first or second offense. It's a B misdemeanor. That's a $500 appearance bond. Have you had an attorney in Knox County previously? Not to my knowledge, no, sir. Okay, uh, we're going to appoint you an attorney since I'm not able to give you pretrial release. Uh, you're going to have a bond hearing oh. this Wednesday with the assistance of oh, this you attorney. Me. You just give me one second. We'll get that squared away. Okay. Okay, so basically after that, there was really, there's no real rambling on after that. Um, and uh, he kind of just walks away. So, um, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> The Knox stream is a cornucopia of <laughs> fun. I'll tell you that much. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. Um, we're going to go to uh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, it's Judge Bryant. And uh, she has a um, mm, mm, rowdy type person. Um, and uh, she takes care of business again. Uh, so let's go to this. So what happened it, with this video is um, she has – she. Oh, let me just pull it up for a second, guys. Okay, so um, this is part one uh, of the video, and um, – because then uh, our defendant here, Ms. Johnson, she has to go um, and do something for Judge Bryant. Uh, so she comes back. But in the meantime, um, I picked up pure gold um, from a jailer that came in and wanted to run Judge Bryant's court. And we all know that that ain't happening. Um, so sit back and relax. Uh, and let, let's hear let's hear Judge Bryant. This is case number 21456-2701. The people of the state of Michigan versus Shonora Lene Johnson. Defendant is charged with one count of operating while intoxicated. Today is the date set for a final pretrial conference and a show cause. Appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Ms. Janora Johnson. Ms. Johnson, ma'am, please tell the judge your full name. Shanora Lene Johnson. Today is a day set for final pretrial conference um, and show cause hearing. With respect to the final pretrial conference, how are we proceeding? You your Honor, Ms. Johnson and I have had the opportunity to discuss this matter. She's also had the opportunity to review with me an advice of rights form. And it is my understanding that at this time, Ms. Johnson wishes to waive her rights and submit to trial, avail herself of what we believe to be an offer from the people, Your Honor, um, and offer the court a plea of guilty to what I believe would be one count of operating while intoxicated um, first offense. Ms. Ritter, is that the people's offer? Judge, that is the people's offer at this time. And ma'am, would you like to accept the people's offer and enter a plea today? Yes. I am going to share my screen. And on my screen, you will see an advice of rights form. Have you had an opportunity to review for yourself Oops. or go over with your lawyer an advice of rights form? Have you had an opportunity to review for yourself or go over with your lawyer an advice of rights form? Unmute Ms. Johnson, please, ma'am. I don't know how I did that. Yes, I did, Your Honor. And when you did that, did you understand your constitutional rights? Yes. Do you understand that this is a misdemeanor and therefore you have a right to a trial? However, if I accept a plea from you today, you are giving up your right to a trial. Yes. 
Has anyone threatened you in any way or promised you anything other, um, anything that was not placed on this record other than the people's offer to get you to plead uh, guilty today? No. Are you currently on probation or parole? Yes, I'm on probation. Drawing your attention to number eight on the advice of rights form, do you understand that if, I, whoops, if I accept this plea from you today, today. Why is my computer acting up? It may be a violation of your probation or parole. Yes. And with that understanding, do you still want to enter a plea today? Yes. Drawing your attention to number 11 on the advice of rights form, do you understand that by entering um, into this voluntary plea, you may be giving up your right to an automatic appeal. And if you were to change your mind about this plea, you would have to request permission of this court to set aside your guilty plea or request permission of the circuit court to appeal the conviction. Yes. With that understanding, do you still want to give up your right to a trial and enter a plea today? Yes, ma'am. Raise your right hand for me, please. Yes. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Johnson, on September 10th of 2021, were you operating a motor vehicle in the area of I-75 at or near West Grand Boulevard in the city of Detroit? Yes. And um, prior to operating that motor vehicle on that date in that location, had you consumed alcohol? Yes. And did the consumption of that alcohol make you intoxicated? Yes. Thank you. And for purposes of the plea, we would stipulate that the blood al alcohol content came back at 0 0.12 and with that defense would be satisfied. Are the people satisfied? Judge, yes, the people are satisfied and so stipulated for purposes of the plea. The court will receive the stipulation and with that stipulation, the court is satisfied and I will accept a guilty plea to one count of operating while intoxicated. In exchange for that plea, the court will dismiss the second offense notice. Having accepted the guilty plea, the court is going to set the matter for sentencing. Prior to sentencing, you must submit to a pre-sentence investigation and a substance abuse evaluation through the probation department. They are going to call you. Uh, if they cannot reach you, they are going to mail you a letter and leave you a message directing you to contact them. Please make sure that you contact them so that I can have an appropriate pre-sentence investigation on the day of your sentencing. With respect to bond and the show cause, you, you're on the verge of going to jail court has a report from <laughs> look at her face look at her face when judge tells her she's got it on the verge of going to jail <laughs> probation that you have tested at 36 district court lab and you have tested positive on four occasions one two three four occasions for alcohol. You tested positive on October 21st, December the 2nd, January 9th, and January 20th. January 20th, that was Friday. Ms. Johnson, oh, please, right now, don't say anything. Just listen to what the go. court is saying. Okay. I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's the report from Ms. Tucker. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
And I believe that the, that Ms. Johnson just heard what the court said that um, she faces incarceration should she test positive for alcohol. I can have a conversation with Ms. Johnson about um, the reliability of the well, year analysis. Well, she can get on an alcohol tether. She can ring you on an alcohol tether. Okay. So I'm, I'm adjusting her bond and she's going to have to get on an alcohol tether. She needs to report for the alcohol tether. Oh, goodness. She Ms. only Johnson, told me I dropped Johnson, one time. Who are you Johnson, talking to? Don't say I was at, I was talking Who to Who are you judge. talking to? I was I was saying you're yeah, you're mute. I don't know why you're talking to me like this. I don't know why you think that this is appropriate. I don't know why you think this is appropriate. I don't care what Miss Tucker told you. So we're in court. We're in court. If you tested positive one time or 10 times, I told you not to drink. If you tested positive one time or 10 times, either time is a violation of my order. I'm sorry too. I'm sorry that you're out here drinking and driving. And I'm sorry that you don't know how to stop drinking when I say stop drinking. So that must mean that you have a problem drinking. And here's the thing, however which way you talk to Ms. Stevenson and however which way you talk to Ms. Tucker, that's not any of my business. But when you address me, we're going to be professional at all times. Now, the fact that you're on this Zoom, maybe you're feeling a little bit more comfortable. So you might need to come in person for your next court date. So the sentencing is going to be in person. Take another drink and you're going to inpatient treatment or jail. But you're going to stop drinking. You're going to stop drinking. Whether you're going to do it voluntarily or whether, you, or whether we're going to drag you kicking and screaming. But you're going to stop drinking. You have already put your life and other people's lives in danger. This is not a laughing matter, joking matter. You're gonna stop drinking. So if you wanna call Miss Tucker and ask Miss Tucker why she told you you only tested positive once, then do that. But every time you come to court and submit to a drug test, then you need to wait for your results. You need to ask them for your results because according to this, you keep drinking. And let me say this to you, Ms. Johnson. I will lock you up before I let you put other people's lives in danger. I will lock you up before I let you keep drinking and driving. Ms. Stevenson, do you want to go into the breakout room with Ms. Johnson or do you want to talk to her later? No, I would like to go into the breakout room with her, Your Honor, because I, I don't, I may have overlooked it. I did not speak to her about a show cause because I didn't know about it. That might be my fault, but I think Ms. Johnson is taken aback and I do want her to um, to clearly understand what's happening today, Your Honor, before right. we conclude the record. Well, I'll send her back to the breakout room. Well, Mr. Johnson Norman is in there holding up my breakout rooms. Um, I'll try to... Resender. I'll move her okay. to breakout room number one. And judge, just so I have it, has the was the show cause sent? Because I I didn't see it. But let me see. I just printed it. Yeah, I mean it's on the docket for show cause. Okay, so what we have now is they're gonna call uh, Miss Tucker, uh, the one who administered the um, urine tests. Um, and how many times that she actually failed. So Ms. Johnson is going to get in touch. Uh, Ms. Stevenson is going to get in touch with Ms. Tucker. That I think they're going to bring Ms. Tucker in. Um, and at this point, uh, they Judge Bryan took on a couple another case. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to um, the part two of this real quick, and we'll see the ending. And I have a bonus on that one because while um, we were – 
uh, waiting for Miss Johnson, the jailer uh, decided to uh, act up and uh, not realize um, who who he was, uh, who, whose courtroom he was in. Um, so uh, let's 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 watch that. So let's watch part so two. So you won't have to come to court. We'll look at it, and if it's they came out. Come anything further. Nothing, Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, guys. I apologize. Um, you know, if I'm jumping, uh, this is like I said, this is our first, my first show. I promise I'll get better at it. Um, believe me, this is leaps and bounds better than when I first started doing this. Um, I was even afraid to press the record button. So again, I apologize um, for any inconvenience in the video quality. You're welcome. Have a great day. Stay safe and happy New Year. Happy New you Year as well. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Murad. Yes, Your Honor. What are you ready? Are what are you ready on? Um, uh, are you ready um, on on Mary uh Meriwether or? Oh, I highlighted this person, but they never came. They didn't come. Right. I think um, I need Martinez, Meriwether, Bohannon, and the iPhone in the break. You need Mart. Oh, no, Mark, Mary went, I mean, they went before they came out. Are you ready on Johnson or Miller or Holmes? Unfortunately, I'm not, Your Honor. I cannot All right, well, talk then to tell Ms. Stevenson, Stevenson and see if I can get ready. Out. Tell her um, to come on out then. I'll do that now, Judge. All right. All right, everyone that I just brought into the uh, courtroom from the breakout from the waiting room, um, I'm going to send you to a breakout room, um, Miss. Well, whoever this is on this iPhone, you cannot be in a moving vehicle and participate in court. You cannot be in a moving vehicle, whether you are the driver or the passenger, and participate in court. I'm going to send the jail to breakout room number one. Everyone pay attention to your screen when prompted to do so. Please accept to join the breakout room. Ms. Merriweather to number two. Mr. Martinez to number. Mr. Martinez is all over the place. Three. <laughs> Dude, and we can see Noah's hair, bro. It, 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 it absolutely amazing. Five. These people still the can't do it soon. Number eight. Why don't you just give it like a trial run for well, for, for a minute or two? Mr. Marat communicated it's properly with his colleague because he went straight to Miss Merriweather. You didn't hear me say pay attention to your screen, and then she's losing it. You didn't hear me say pay attention to your screen. <laughs> she's fantastic. Okay, here we Ms. go. Miss Bohannon, you didn't hear me say pay attention to your screen? No, ma'am. Well, you should have because you should have been listening and paying attention to what I was saying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do this and take care of a baby at the same time. Well, I, you, you can't take care of your baby and come to court. <laughs> so this morning, it looked like you had a court appearance and you were supposed to get a babysitter. Ms. Stevenson, are you aware that Ms. Jackson is in person? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Are you ready on Jackson? I'm, I am not ready on Dorothy Jackson, Your Honor. All right. Um, are we going back on the record with Ms. Johnson or is she all set? Um, just very briefly, Your Honor, very briefly. All right, then we're back on the record with um, case number 21456270101. Um, again, for the record, Janice Stevens, and on behalf of Ms. Shonora Johnson, Ms. Johnson, just ma'am, please just say your name. Unmute and just say your name. Uh, oh, okay. Shonora Lene Johnson. So, Your oh, Honor. I did. The, what did I just do? Hold on one second. Okay. Put that on the wrong page. Mm -hmm. 
these are the moments that I love. I don't know about you, but these are the moments that I absolutely love. These human moments in, in such a uh, um, okay, go ahead. serious setting. So, Your Honor, Ms. Johnson, on behalf of Ms. Johnson, um, I would extend an apology to the court. Again, Ms. Johnson and, and myself both, we were just completely taken aback by the report. Ms. Johnson um, is not well, she says she has not been drinking, but she knows the test, the results from the lab are what the lab results are. And she's ready to um, really deal she with hasn't whatever. Been drinking. She, she has she a, tested positive the one, four times and she hasn't, and she hasn't been drinking. She has a, um, she has the one positive test. She acknowledges that, you know, why that probably did happen. The other, she just doesn't know. And so she is ready to, if the only alternative to incarceration is the alcohol tether, she would like to take that option. Um, Ms. Johnson is trying to do what she's supposed to do. And we just didn't know about, I didn't have a chance to prepare her as to how she should appear in front of the court. She's been here before, but that was very disturbing to her and we don't have an explanation for it. So she's at a loss and she let her emotions get the best of her, but she wants to do what she's supposed to do on this order and doesn't want to go to jail, Your Honor. Well, let's call Ms. Tucker. Madam Clerk, call Ms. Tucker. Have Ms. Tucker come to the courtroom, please. Okay, so she's calling Tucker now um, to clarify how many times Ms. Johnson has tested positive for alcohol. And see if Ms. Tucker is in error with her report. Because nobody gonna tell me you tested positive four times and um and you're not drinking. All right. It's the, I'm it's ready. the three that were we we're just really puzzled about the last three. The first one, she's we're okay with that. Well, any one of them gets her in violation. Yeah, that absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, who are you? Are you ready on Jalen Johnson? Yes, Your Honor, ready on Jalen Johnson. Are you ready on? Oh boy. Diamond Holmes. Ready on Diamond. Okay. You remember the highlights magazines where you would say, what's wrong with this picture? So let's just look at this real quick. What's wrong with this picture? And what is going to be the outcome after this? Just look at this for a second. I'm not going to say a word. What is wrong with this picture? Holmes. All right. I'm going to take Johnson and Holmes. Oh, Miss Miss Johnson not ready for me. Y'all, you talked to her in the breakout room with her arms out like this? We had on a sweater or something. So you want oh, to put that back on, Miss Johnson. put a sweater back on, man. We, we can't come to court with a tank top on. <laughs> All right. I'm ready on Holmes. I'm going to put Miss Johnson back in the waiting room. <laughs> She actually took it well, easy. Ms. Holmes isn't ready either. All right, I'm ready on Holmes. This is case number 2144919. We have no contest, Your Honor, to um, what I think would be. And therefore, you have a right to a trial. Mr. I mean, I could do a judge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Holmes. It's going to March no contest. With respect to the sentencing, ma'am, you must submit to a pre-sentence investigation and substance abuse evaluation through the probation department. 22444580. All right. Where is Sanders on my document? Conference appearances, please. Matter for sentencing Thursday. Yes. And with that, asking me a question about probation. Why, well, so Ms. Probation. Johnson? Ms. Johnson, you've been submitting to your analysis. So if you have, if you if you understand when you're supposed to be back in court, I can give you a call later on today to talk about anything. Thank you, Judge. 
nothing on behalf of oh miss johnson Don't everybody speak at one time? What is he charged with? A Sunday. Okay, today is the day set for a tether violation. Appearances, please. So the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Rod Murad, PA3665, on behalf of Mr. Frank Sanders, who's also on Zoom. Mr. Sanders, can you please unmute your device and state your name for the record? Just a man, they just be acting like they don't know how to just push that little button. <laughs> Mr. Alderman is moving a little too much. Help. Through. I'm thinking, no help. But I think state, state your name, Mr. Sanders. So state your full uh, name. Who loves being in jail? Who, who do you have you met somebody that loved being in jail yet? You talking about you hate being um, in there. Cause you can't get no help. You should hate being. You should just hate being in jail. You should just hate being in jail. Whether you can get help in jail or not, it look like you just should hate being in jail. Um, all right. What's your name? All right. Today is the date set for. Well, today they brought him in on a tether violation. Looks like he violates the tether because he got arrested on another case. Is that what happened? I never Your Honor, I actually have no, no, Mr. Sanders, I'm going to speak on your behalf. Um, I actually have no information with regard to well, the violation. Well, you should, because I asked Ms. Seelman to send it to your colleague this morning. I, I mean, I don't know what else y'all want me to do now. <laughs> I mean, Ms. Stevenson should forward it to you, because Ms. Seelman should have forwarded it to Ms. Stevenson and Ms. Ritter, because I, I said, when I got it this morning, I said forward it to the people who need it. So he's in jail. They violated the tether because he got arrested on a felonious assault. And if that's the case, I don't understand why they, he would be put on my docket for a tether violation. When is his next court date? February 1st. It is on uh, March 15, 2023 on this matter, Judge. All right. And so does he have a bond on the other case? Look at him with his hand raised. I swear it's great. It's like when I'm in the classroom and there's this one kid that's raising his hand and you know it's the wrong answer, uh, but you just and you just don't want to call on him. You know, Sanders, whatever he has to say is going to spark a reaction from Bryant that is just not going to be good. Your Honor, when I checked the bond here, it only says assault and battery. Um, it doesn't say anything else is pending. So I don't have anything. I, I don't know any other case that's pending. Deputy. Sir, you're not in school. Put your hand down. <laughs> Deputy. Look at him laughing. Yes, ma'am. Um, does Mr. Sanders... Uh, have the felonious, uh, does he have any other charges pending? It says he violated the tether because he was arrested on a felonious assault. Does he have any other charges pending? Let me check, ma'am. All right, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Judge, can I get one? <laughs> can you get one what? I just wanted to tell you that uh, since I got out, you know. Can you get one what? I just wanted to give you uh, uh, perception and everything I'm going through. I don't want to get your perception on it. I'm only interested in this tether violation um, charge. That's all I'm interested in. Right, well, I have Mr. Alderman, can you tell me why we have to look at your whole, you know, body, belly up to the camera? All right, let's go to Mr. <laughs> Mr. I guess Alderman while we wait. <laughs> I'm sorry for pausing, but if you don't appreciate this, and this isn't funny, I don't know what is. Guys, this is the reason why I started this channel. It's fantastic. This is just a this is just a great, great thing. <laughs> Court streams are the best. Excuse me, Miss Bryant. I apologize. My name is not Miss Bryant. My name is not Miss Bryant. My name is Judge Bryant. That's my name. Sorry, Miss Judge Bryant. I apologize. I never mean no harm. I, 
I mean to disrespect you in no hey, way. Hey, nation, hey, hey Miss, Mr. Alderman, let's why. just let, let's just stop it. Let's just never. Nobody's gonna say anything else. Let's just. I'll talk on your guys' behalf. If you watch Judge Bryant religiously, when you see <laughs> Attorney Murat, he just plays referee because he knows if it goes on for a split second more, Mount <laughs> Bryant is going to explode. She stirs in that seat and it's ready to explode. And he just, <laughs> the things he does just to avoid that on a daily basis is 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 just that that should be his only job responsibility never mind never mind defending the public he should just be the middleman for a judge bryant lashing and everyone else <laughs> i thought that's what happened All stop. um I thought that's when, when we come to court. I mean, yes, deputy. Listen, what I'm not going to do is have this. I mean, what is going on? Are we, why, why am I listening to Mr. Sanders talk to the deputy? Okay, no, deputy. He just got assault and battery. <laughs> So he doesn't have another charge. No, ma'am. All right, thank you. And then, Mr. Murat, who put the tether on Mr. Sanders? Yeah, the mail house put a tether on me. When Could I you was... stop talking? Could I you believe stop talking? I believe this honorable court did. And when did I do that? Why did I do that? When did I do put the tether on Mr. Sanders? <laughs> um, let me check now, Judge. Is actually it was placed on um, by the magistrates well, on November 9, 2022. So the tether is going to be removed, and Mr. Sanders is going to go about his business, um, and he'll come to court March fifteenth. Anything further? Yeah, so we're just asking that no con the no contact order stay in place with the complaining witness and Mr. Sanders. All right, but this is what I want. I want the defendants who come to court from jail to understand that you're still in court. And all of this other talking to the people over here and doing all of this, it's not going to happen in here. Mr. Sanders' bond is going to be reduced uh, to whatever it was without the GPS tether and no contact with the complaining witness. And he'll come to court on March 15th, uh, as long as this is the only case he has pending. Mr. Sanders, you have to appear in person or on Zoom. Anything further with respect to Mr. Sanders? No, thank you, Judge. All right, Mr. Sanders is all set. I'm ready on Mr. Uh, Alderman, who's going to stop talking and laughing. <laughs> I love it. Look at the book. Oh, he's he's in. He... What's all that for? <laughs> we're either going to come to court or we're not. Let's put him on another day. If he's not ready to come to court today, let's put him on another day. Ready to come to court. I'm but just... it act like it. I don't want no smoke, man. You I don't want no smoke either, but don't talk to me like that. That's street language. That's slang. <laughs> Look at me. You address the court. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Let me just indicate I'm sick of it. So the fact that you're in jail is not going to bring the level of this courtroom decorum down to jail level. When you're talking to the people in jail, talk to the people in jail. Yes, when you're coming in here to talk to me, talk to me like we not like we in court and not in jail. I'm not yes, in jail, not your home girl. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This is case number two one. Four four two. 0201. The people of the state of Michigan versus Larry Reno Alderman. The defendant is charged with one count of assault or assault and battery. And today is the date set for a pretrial conference. Appearances, please. For the record, John and Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. And Ryan Murad, PA3665, on behalf of Mr. Larry Alderman. Mr. Alderman, please state your full name and nothing else for the record. Larry Reno Alderman Jr. 
Thank you, sir. Today is the date set for a free trial conference. Give me one moment. I'm trying to write. Guys, that was that was fantastic, that explosion. All right. Today is the date set for pre trial conference. How are we proceeding? Judge, we move for dismissal for complainant's failure to appear. Ms. Ritter? Judge, it's the first occasion of the pre-trial conference. I want to respect the request of court adjourn this pre-trial conference to give the complainant witness, Mr. Richard Briggs. I'm not going to do his case. I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. I'm not doing his case. No. Mm -mm. Mr. Murad, does he have another um, case pending? Oh. Yes, right. Okay, when is court day for that case? Maybe by that time he would have calmed down. Because I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm calm, but this case is going on since 2020. Absolutely. And now he's cursing in my courtroom. He cursing in my courtroom. Like, I don't know how to do my job. I don't care if it's been going on since 1966. <laughs> it's the first time that it is appearing in my courtroom. It is the first time that it is appearing in my courtroom on my docket. When is his court date for his other case? Because he can go talk to that judge like this. I'm not going to sit up here and let him flail his arms and all that at me. Well, Judge, unfortunately, his he was set to turn himself in for a sentence on the 19th, but he missed that date because he was picked back up. Um, so he's sort of in limbo right now with regard to when his next court date is. Well, I wonder if he flailed up his arms at the other judge <laughs> and told them how long that case been going on. Well, let me just say this. I'm sick of coming to work, getting up out of my bed, driving down my vehicle to be disrespected. <laughs> I did not go to law school to be disrespected. I did not accept the governor's appointment to be disrespected. Now, since Mr. Alderman knows how to handle court, let's just let him handle the court. Let's, I, let, I can t go off the screen, take a break, from my job, and I'll let Mr. Alderman do my job. But if we're going to do the job, and, and if I adjourn his case today, it's going to be like it never occurred. So then when she come back and ask me for another adjournment because the complainant failed to appear, then I'm going to give her another adjournment. It's going to be going on for some more years. So if we're going to handle it appropriately, then let's handle it appropriately. Yes, Your Honor. And it sounded to me like this case was holding Mr. Alderman up. <laughs> sounded to me like he like like this was the reason why he was being held in custody. The court is going to grant defense counsel's uh, strike that the court is going to grant the people's request for a one-time adjournment in this 2021 case. And set the matter for a, a final, I'm sorry, a pretrial conference. When is his court date? You said he doesn't have a court date on the other case. So he just sitting in jail on the other case with nowhere to go, except if, I, if he only had my case, he would be free. Is that what you're saying? If he only had your case, he would likely right. Uh, so be he, free. so it's my fault that it's taking a long time. It's not the other court fault or nothing like that. Okay. No, Judge, definitely not. And, and you know, this is super out of out of Mr. Alderman's character. No, it's not. Think. It's looking like it's exactly his character. <laughs> um, the court is going to set the matter for another pretrial conference. I will set that pretrial conference for. You sure is no court date on the other case? I, all right. Judge, I'm going based off what, um, what Mr. Is, Alderman. Is it a felony? Is that case a felony or a misdemeanor? Oh, boy. It's a felony, Judge. All right. I'm checking county records now. OK. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna set the, the pretrial conference for Monday, February the
oh, the court is closed. And I'm going to set it for. So now at this point, wouldn't you put that hand down? At some point, you have to realize that that is not going to be good. Sometimes I actually think it's being done on spite just to get her man. Because at this point, he's like, screw it. I'm going to be uh, – I'm screwed anyway. She hates me. So I might as well just keep this hand up because he knows that that's pissing her off. Monday, February 13th. Is that a month? Is that a yes, on three weeks. The court will set the matter for February 13th at nine. I mean, I'm sorry, at 8:35, 8:36. The complaining witness is required to appear. Failure of the complaining witness to appear will most likely result in the matter being dismissed unless the people have a valid explanation for the failure. Mr. Morrell, what is Mr. Alderman's bond on this case? Um, I believe it's a $100, 10%. Court will set the matter for $100 personal bond, no contact with the complaining witness. And if he gets out on the other case, then they will let him out on both cases. Anything further? No, thank you, Judge. Not at this time, Your all right, we're all set until February 13th at 8.36. Have a great day. Stay safe. All right, I'm ready. Can you get Miss Miss Stevenson? Yes, sir. So now remember, we got that bonus, and now we're going back to Miss Johnson, who we got Miss Tucker to give the results of the supposed four dirty um your analysis so that's the actual reason why i was recording and we just got those uh jailer gems for us All right, I'm ready um, on Shanora Johnson again. And this is recalling case number 21456-2701. Good morning, Ms. Tucker. Good morning, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Tucker, you submitted a, a show cause to me and Ms. Ms. Johnson says that that show cause is incorrect. Well, Your Honor, uh, the defendant actually tested positive here at the court at the 13th district last uh, three occasions since being uh, online. She tested positive on four times. My correction. She first tested positive on October 21st. She then again tested positive on September 2nd. She then again tested positive on January 9th and last on January 20th, which was this past uh, Friday. The first time she did test positive, I spoke with her. She told me the same thing that she didn't drink. And I did warn her that she was a probation, well, a show cause would be submitted um, due to the first positive. And then she continued to test positive on. And I have the screens here from the district court lab. That's what I want. Can you send that to me? Yes, I can, Your Honor. Um, give it to the clerk. Don't show me no bottle of pills, ma'am. Don't show me no bottle of pills. Um, I can't. Because I'm not even testing for them pills. So you can put them pills down. The only thing we testing for is, is alcohol. I don't care nothing about them pills. Ms. Johnson, ma'am, all we're doing right now, ma'am, is listening, please, ma'am. Thank you. What did I do with Thank the you. show calls? I, where is the show calls? Said it somewhere. 
And so, oh, Miss Miss Tucker stepped on. Oh, here it is. It's right in my face. So, Miss Tucker, uh, you spoke to her after she tested positive on October twenty first, and then um, you didn't speak to her again when she kept testing positive because she said you told you told her she only tested positive one time. Well, she told me on the October 21st, she said that there was no way she could be positive. She didn't drink. I told her that she continued to test. There will be a show cause against her, and she continued to do so. So I submitted. That was my second um, show cause submitted. And she's testing positive for alcohol, right? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Okay. She's going on the alcohol test. And then it won't be, no, won't be a question. So I want to see those, those, um, I'm going to look at those results, but she's going on, uh, on an alcohol test. When, when, um, the people come to the lab and you may not know this, cause this, this is a question for the lab, but you may know. So if I come and I drug test at the you know lab, do, uh, do I get a copy of my results? Um, no, you don't. The results are we go into a portal to print them out. I'm not for sure if they can request a copy from the lab. Um, that I'm not for sure. Um, but okay, I that's what I, I do need to find that out. Not 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 because it's going to change anybody's results, but um, I think the person should be able to get a copy of their results in case they want to challenge them at the time. I don't know what our system is of challenging the results, but what I'm going to say is this: she didn't we didn't mess up four times now we might have messed up once and i might say we might have messed up twice i don't know but we didn't mess up no three times four times she drinking and i don't know what you drinking but you better stop because i'm gonna put you on this alcohol tether first and then if you keep testing positive you're gonna get all the inpatient treatment or jail and this is all while this case uh, before your sentencing. So you you better stop drinking. You better stop drinking. Now you can fool yourself every day. You could you could lie to yourself and say you ain't drinking. You could lie to yourself and say that must have been the, the Listerine. You could lie to yourself and say whatever you want to say, but I've been doing this thing for 30 years. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been on the bench half of that time. Half of the time, 15 years on the bench, 30 years in total, 31 years I've been practicing law. You can lie to yourself and 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 lie about that the test and that it's not you testing positive. You can keep lying to yourself, Ms. Johnson, but it's not gonna turn out good for you in life. Lying to yourself is the worst thing a person could do. Lying to yourself. You can lie to other people, but when you sit at home and believe your own lie, you in a dangerous place. It's one thing about me. Somebody could say something about me, I could care less what they say. Cause if I'm the only one know if it's the truth or a lie. But when I'm sitting up and I'm gonna lie to myself, it would be foolish for me to, to tell somebody that I'm not addicted to snacks. That would be dumb. <laughs> because when everybody go to bed, them snacks I got in my top drawer, they might not see me eating the snacks. Me too. But if I decide to go in that drawer and eat the snack myself, it doesn't matter if nobody else sees me. I'm not going to lie to myself and say, you're not addicted to snacks. No, I know if I want to cut off snacks, I can't have them in the house. So that's what I start. Don't even bring them in my house. Because if they're in here, I'm going to eat them, whether you see me eat them or not. So four times the lab has said, you drink it. Now, you're the only one on this Zoom that know exactly for sure if you're drinking. Now, I'm convinced by a preponderance of the evidence, and I might almost say but beyond a reasonable doubt, but it wouldn't be beyond a reasonable doubt without the testimony of the lab person who conducted the test on each occasion. So without that, it's not beyond a reasonable doubt. But I'm certainly convinced by a preponderance of the evidence that you drink it. And I'm gonna just tell you this, I'm not the right one to, I'm not the one to drink with. 
I'm not the one to take drinking lightly on and you on a drunk driving case. I'm not the one. I'm not the one. And let me just say this to you. It's not a lot that can get past me. It's not a lot that can get past me. Some stuff can sneak past me, but it seems like eventually it just come back up. Some kind of way, it come back up. I find out about it. A lot of stuff can't sneak past me. Miss Johnson, you too young for this. You're too young for this. You're too young. Too young. But I mean, really, I, I'm not being honest because if you were older, I would probably be saying you're too old. <laughs> so I really think it's no age that this is acceptable. All right, Miss, Miss, um, we're gonna order. Well, before I before I encumber her with the alcohol tether, because I think the alcohol tether is is the most expensive thing that I could put her on. I think that that's the most expensive. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, she's going to test once a week at the court. I'm not even going to charge her for that, for these tests between. Now, Miss 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 Tucker, make sure you write this part down because I'm, I'm only not charging her for these tests that I'm getting ready to tell you about. Then after that, she does have to pay the, you know, we're going to add it into her probation. But I'm going to increase her test and she's going to test once a week. And if she tests positive, uh, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. And I'm going a, I'm to a immobilize that vehicle she on, or I'm going to put an interlock on that vehicle. And I'm going to put on an alcohol test. I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff because I'm not going to let her just be out here dr uh, drinking. And then, and now I see she's sitting in the car. She wasn't sitting in the car when we first started, but she's sitting in the car now. But I'm not going to allow her to just be out here drinking. Uh, on a drunk driving case. That's just ludicrous. And that means she needs help. If she's still drinking, she needs help. So we're going to see. And then I want her to get a copy. That's why I was asking you. Because I want her to get a copy of her results. Every time she come in here, I want her to get a copy of these results. So she can stop being in denial and saying these not her results. And let me say this to you. Alcohol don't test positive on when you're taking pills and drugs we got those results too if they doing a whole test we know what else in your system so don't come don't show me no pills when i'm talking about alcohol and if you're taking pills you shouldn't be drinking but she's gonna test once a week once a week until her sentencing day and and i'm not charging her for those tests at the court the, the court i'm gonna waive those those these tests right here once a week and if she tests positive, then it's going to be some different. She going to drug court, sobriety court, on the day of her sentencing. She's going to go to sobriety court because we're not going to do this. All right. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Tucker. All right. Thank you, Miss Johnson. All right. I apologize. Have a good right. day. You too. Thank you, Miss Tucker. Thank you. Have a good day, Your Honor. All right. You too. Happy. So after all that screaming, the yelling, barking at her, exploding, um, she took on the motherly figure role and didn't even nail her with that tether. Um, and what we heard before with Miss um, Mendoza's case, that cost over $1,000. Um, so she could have really strapped Miss Johnson with that. Um, and instead, um, she opted to give her a test once a week. Um, you know, and she's, this is her last shot. You know, I really wouldn't want to see a follow-up on her. Um, and, uh, you know, Judge Bryant does that a lot. Uh, she, she, she always, um, comes off very hard. She's, she, you know, she's like, she's like, uh, you know, I'm Italian and she's like an old Italian mother, um, that comes off real hard, going to hit you with the spoon and all that. And then all of a sudden, you know, she, she, she takes it easy on you. Um, because she, she, she cares. She really does care. She's a great judge. Um, speaking of great judges, um, my last clip of our first show time served is my favorite, your favorite, the honorable Cedric J. Simpson presiding. Um, it's a quick one. Um, but what I want you to see is in the beginning, Okay, 
in the beginning, he gives a little thing. He gives a little hmm. Okay, just watch that and then uh, see why he does that. Thank you. Thank you. And here we go. Court calls the case People versus Lee Espinosa. Two cases. Rob Dowd on behalf of the people. Zachary Ward on behalf of Miss Espinosa. Miss Espinosa, can you please state your name? Leah Espinosa. And Judge Weaver. Um, hey, um, Mr. Ward. Um, since it, this just has to be the block that I just have to ask counsel to speak to their client about how they conduct themselves in the courtroom. I don't think I'm ever rude to anybody. I told Miss Espinosa as she was trying to get into the last block that she was setting the 11 o'clock block. My count, my staff told her she was in the 11 o'clock block. It was on her screen. If she had looked at it, that it was 11 o'clock block. Then I got on myself, said she's in the 11 o'clock block and the court was taking recess. And she then had the nerve in my courtroom to call me rude. Ooh. So I'm sure I, you don't need to say anything. I'm sure you'll talk to her about that and talk to her about the implications of doing that and what could possibly happen to her if she keeps that behavior up. Yes, Judge. And we and we discussed that uh, during the recess. As far as the case, uh, we would be requesting a last adjournment. Um, Ms. Espinoza has gone through both screenings for mental health court. And uh, according to them, they need their group meeting is on February 1st. And so that will allow them to come to a final um, uh, determination as to Ms. Espinoza's entry into mental health court. Bravo cause conference set. February, I'll adjourn it to February 9th, 2023, 9 a.m. or as your Zoom invite indicates. Thank you, Your Honor. Bond will continue. Okay, well, there you have it, guys. That was our first show, Time Served, Court Case Channel with me, Phil. I look forward to seeing you seven days a week. I'm going to try to get as many shows as I possibly can. I thank you for watching. Remember to like this video and subscribe.